Good afternoon everybody. I hope you are having a fantastic day today and uh, keeping warm too obviously because it is chilly here in Australia in Brizzy and uh, I hope you'll join me today for a, I know it might sound boring, but the recipe that we'll be making today is baked beans. And I know that some of you might be going, baked beans? What? Well, this is the reason. Um, these little tiny, tiny gems are navy beans. They're also known as haricot beans or haricot beans. I usually buy mine in bulk like that, um, so I have a stash. I love to make mine from scratch because then I don't have to have a tin handy. A really great idea with this little recipe is you can make it and you can freeze whatever extras you have left over. So these are such fantastic little, I know they're small, but they are absolutely brilliant. Um, and I'll give you a wonderful tip. Uh, for you to actually do ahead of time. You'll see that I have some beans over here. They look a little bit bigger than the first option that I pulled up, which was the dried version. The second version, you'll see the difference in size. So uh, the one on this side is the one that's been soaked and the other one is the dry version. So. A great little secret for you is to bear in mind that whenever you're going to prepare some beans um, that are the dried version, these store for years and years under the correct conditions. So uh, for those of you perhaps that live remotely or um, you're concerned about food uh, security, beans are one of the most fantastic resources to have as a backup and I will like I say often have a couple of stashes couple of bags uh, put away because they are so nutritious and packed full of protein as well so this recipe I'm making today the baked beans I will be omitting the ham uh, from this recipe but please go ahead and add that in if that is something that you would love to have um, and my secret top tip about beans is um, actually the bean that you choose, whatever you're choosing, it could be a different type of bean, but a really good example to help you along. I know this is a controversial subject, but those of you that struggle with a bit of flatulence when you do consume the bean, uh, a really great tip that I've found helps my guts is to actually soak them for two days instead of one. You will notice that after maybe even two or three hours, there will be some bubbles that come to the surface. Take, get rid of that water and get a new set of water. We just keep doing that. Every time you come into the kitchen, I usually put my beans next to where the uh, sink is, and then I will just wash that water out. And you will notice a big difference. The longer you soak your beans for, the better your body can handle those. So that is my top little tip that I wanted to share with you today. Let's get started with this recipe. As you can see, it will be super easy. There is a bit of a cook time, hence the reason why I am coming on a little bit earlier than usual, but that's okay. You will still get these fantastic tips for this recipe. There are other recipes that are available on Cookie Do. But the one that I am looking at has a black bowl, a large black bowl of beans. So go ahead and look for that recipe on Cookie Do. And I will also include a link for that in the chat section below, comment section. So first things first, it actually tells you to get a ceramic bowl. And what you will do um, is pop that on top of your lid and you will weigh out 380 grams worth of the dried navy beans or the haricot beans. Now, if you don't have those available at your local store, another option is to choose cannellini beans. Uh, those are very similar and have a similar structure. Please, as recommended via the hints and tips, do not utilize red kidney beans. The temperature that this recipe gets to won't cook it. Um, I think that applies maybe even uh, to the slow cooked version as well. So uh, what you need to do is put in 850 grams of water, let that soak as it says overnight or two days worth. So that's up to you what your preference is. 
Then what you want to do is, at this stage, make sure that you drain that properly from the water that it's been soaking in. If you didn't want to have all of the kerfuffle of doing this portion of it and preparing the beans ahead, what you can do is eliminate that and just start with this stage next, which is sorting out your flavors for your beans. So what we're going to do then, in other words, you just get a couple of tins of your beans and you can start prepping this portion of the recipe and add in those cooked beans. Make sure they're drained as well from the tin. So we're going to add in uh, one brown onion. It says approximately 150 grams and cut those in half. Then what you're going to do is add in one garlic clove and then you will notice I have a long red chili in here as well. You can choose a green one. If you don't want chili, eliminate that altogether. So I'm going to pop that in. And then also it calls for this ingredient, which is your dried basil, one teaspoon worth of that. So pop that in. And then what we're going to do is add our lid back on. And process this for three seconds on speed number seven. You could hear that it actually didn't even it hit the side and we could have uh, uh, stopped it after a couple of seconds, literally, like one second. So what we're going to do then is scrape that down and then add in our veggie, or I should say our um, virgin olive oil. Um, you can use any oil that you prefer. Um, so even if you have your veggie oil or your sunflower oil, you can use that, 30 grams, so not too much. And then we're going to then put the lid back on and that will cook for two minutes on 100 degrees Celsius and that's speed number one. So what that will do is just brown off the onions, get rid of that raw flavor, and then you're going to do a couple of extra steps. So there is a cook time of 45 minutes for the beans themselves, and then adding in a tin of tomatoes after that 45 minute cook, cook time, and that will do another 30 minute cook time after that. So hence the reason why I'm coming on earlier. So there is a bit of time, but the wonderful thing is this is a bulk recipe. You can make a large amount. So I haven't included, um, before I decided what to do this week for cooking, I'd already gone ahead and put in 250 grams worth of the dried beans soaking. So mine is just under, it's 250. Obviously the recipe calls for 380. So that's quite a big difference. I'm sure it most probably would come up to the top of the uh, basket. So that's quite a bit of beans. Um, the great thing though is if you love to cook ahead and have something stashed in your freezer, this is a wonderful addition to any soup or stew, especially at this time of year. Um, you can even make a great um, casserole and pop these in there. So uh, please Bear in mind that this is, it does take a bit of time to make, uh, but the results are you have some extras uh, that you can have inside your fridge. It'll stay for three days and then obviously in your freezer for a couple of months. So make sure to label it. Otherwise you won't remember what's inside your Ziploc bag or whatever container you have. So uh, there's a couple more seconds here. What we're going to do after this is add some extra flavorings to the beans. Some are optional. Uh, the first one is, uh, it actually asks for kombu. So five centimeter kombu, I won't be using that today. Um, I will leave that one out. But the next option, and I'm going to leave this one out too, it calls for one tablespoon worth of apple juice concentrate. So um, I'm not going to pop that in. It does say two teaspoons of molasses, and I'm going to cheat. I didn't want to, and I know it would give a fantastic flavor, but I didn't want to have to specifically buy molasses. So I'm going to, con I'm going to substitute that with just two teaspoons worth of sugar. The reason I am not buying some extra ingredients is because we are moving uh, and relocating to our new property up uh, on the northern side of Brisbane. So uh, I don't want to be adding extra things to be able to move with me. So 
All right. The next ingredient we're going to add in is one and a half tablespoons of your veggie stock. So if you haven't yet made your veggie stock uh, or in the habit of doing it, please do yourself a favor. This is an invaluable resource in your kitchen. So the next ingredient that we're going to be using is one teaspoon of tamari. So this is GF. Um, if you don't have this, you can use your uh, soy sauce as another option. So you could, if you didn't want to use your your teaspoon, just put in some, you actually put in five grams worth of the tamari because it's a liquid ingredient. So at the top right, you'll be able to push your scales. Um, there's a little, three little buttons. Pop that on um, and you'll see your third option is your scales. So don't worry about that. We are doing it the old fashioned way with the teaspoon. And the next ingredient is half of a teaspoon of your mayonnaise. So this is, it does say there's stick seeded whole grain, um, half of a teaspoon. So if you didn't have that, if you just had Dijon mustard, you could use that as well. And then we're going to add in those beans. So the ones that I've had in before, that was 250, but the recipe calls for 380. And then it calls for 850 grams worth of water. I will be reducing that as well because I don't want to add all of that in. So mine will go to, gonna, uh, well, I'm, I'm thinking 600 should be good enough. And then here is your 45 minute cook. Uh, so this is uh, going to be 45 minutes on Veroma and speed stir. And then I'll explain at the end what you need to do. So the next step once that cooking has finished is to add in one, one of these. So your tin tomato, 400 grams worth of that. And then what you will do is cook, as I said, another 30 minutes on 100 degrees Celsius. And that will be on reverse because it doesn't obviously want to break your beans up. Same applies for this step. And then it does say serve immediately um, or otherwise let it cool down and portion it out and freeze that. So um, I hope this recipe has helped inspire you. Give the little beans a go and if you are not too keen on cooking or making or preparing the dried version then just pull out a tin of beans and add those little extra flavorings and uh, you'll be surprised i just realized i know i mentioned before that i was going to do the recipe with ham and that was the boston baked beans i think that's why i swapped it over because i, I knew i didn't have ham in my fridge <laughs> but anyway um, that is the recipe that you can find on cookiedo.com.au. So go and have a look for that. I hope you'll join me again on another day for another recipe in my kitchen. Thanks for joining me. I am B from Thermi Tucker. Take care.